Thank you for tuning in. This is DJ Bob Fresh from SegaShiro.com, the Sega resource. And today we're looking at those lovable, those laughable, those often wacky and annoying monkeys from Super Monkey Ball. This is Super Monkey Ball Step and Roll on the Nintendo Wii. And the Monkey Ball franchise is, always rides a fine line between annoying and cute, between frustrating and fun. And Monkey Ball Step and Roll continues with that legacy. This one also brings forward with Wii Balance Board support, which, if you think about it, seems like a nice forward progression for the series. It seems to be the next step in the evolution of the franchise. However, if there's one issue with the game, it's that the, the Wii Board support never feels exactly right. And after over my hours of playing this game, I almost always immediately switched back to the controller option. So I mean, in that way it played a lot more like Banana Blitz, however, there are some mini games in this that use the board quite nicely. Now there are quite a few options in this game to play through. There's over 70 levels, there's new modes like co-op, marathon, and mirror image. Um, I particularly like co-op even though it was very very simple but it's something that you could play with a friend. There's six main worlds and uh, in marathon mode you can actually line up all of the levels in a row and then play them continuously. However, if there's one thing that Super Monkey Ball is chocked full of, it's party minigames. And obviously this is a game that is a lot more fun with a lot of people around than it is as a single player experience. As you can see in the screens before, it always starts off with a training session so it'll guide you through what you're supposed to do in the game. And I found that other than the main arcade game, this is where the Wii board support really shines. So for example, in playing uh, Red Light, Green Light, you're actually sort of tapping and walking on the board. Felt quite natural, felt quite nice. Um, and some of the other mini games really use the Wii board quite well. Especially like Fire Pump where you're putting up the fires. Um, you're actually stepping on the board or kind of pumping on the board to kind of launch the water forward. That felt kind of cool. But then again, there are also misses particularly the Ninja Star Throwing game. I never quite felt like I got the hang of it, even though I've tried it again and again. Um, however, then for example, this game was quite a lot of fun. So there's lots of variation uh, to take these monkey ball characters through. And Sega did a really good job at, at providing variety. However, each individual game will appeal to certain tastes and not to all. However, I think if you were doing like a mini family tournament, or if you were playing it with a bunch of friends, this game would improve significantly. It's one thing to play it on your own, but it's another to play it with people. Because the game only utilizes one Wii board, that's more of a Nintendo issue than it is a Sega one. Uh, so certain of the mini games require you to use the Wii board as sort of a hot seat jumping on and off. However, there is a lot of multi-screen play. Um, you can use up to four controllers and nunchucks and play all of the mini games using the hand controller so it's incredibly accessible that way you don't even need the Wii board at all and I think for many gamers they will automatically switch to the Wii mode anyways. On the presentation side of things it's very easy to navigate through the various menus to get to all 20 plus mini games. The graphics are actually quite nice even on an HD television the art style holds up and it all looks very very clean. I love the music in this game it's all very cheery and fun um, it's a little kiddish, but it fits the universe very well. As a bit of an aside, any game that lets me get on the Wii board and thrust wildly in, in all directions always gets some bonus points. So there are some gameplay differences if you use the Wii board versus the Wii mode. For example, if you're using the Wii board, there are less obstacles, often sometimes tracks that you can follow uh, to kind of aid you in the gameplay. However, the Wii board requires very, very subtle movements. Most people are going to get on the board and want to flail wildly side to side and really what you have to do is really almost minutely move um, to get the character to move around as you want. Particularly one problem with the Wii board is changing from a forward direction to a back direction. It just never feels natural and makes it far more frustrating than it has to be. Using the Wiimote however, uh, Sega's seen it fit to add more obstacles in your way, making it a harder gameplay, however your control is that much tighter, and it ultimately feels more natural on the controller than it does on the board. Super Monkey Ball Step and Roll is a mixed bag for sure. On the one hand, I liked using the Wii Mote and playing the arcade mode. I enjoyed it more than Banana Blitz, however, the minigame selection was a mixed bag, and 
the fact that the Wii balance board support doesn't quite work the way you want it to is a little bit frustrating. I mean, if you're just going to buy this game for Wii Balance Board support, I would suggest that it probably isn't the game you want. However, if you love the Monkey Ball franchise, this is a solid entry in that series. In the end, this is probably a game best fit for families that want innocuous gameplay, or for fans of the franchise who've loved every single Monkey Ball up to this point and have made it the franchise it is today. All other people need not apply. <laughs>